Hey guys, Daniel here in the Vortex at Disclosure Fest with Nassim Harami. Nassim, an honor to be here with you, brother. Thank you. Thanks so, for having me. Of course, you've done some incredible work on the scientific frontier showing us that it is possible to harness the energy out of the vacuum. And so when we're looking at how this is going to be changing the scope of technology and engineering, how have you found that starting in your work to now, this is going to change our life and the world forever. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it's really critical for humanity to find new sources of energy at this point in our history. You know, uh, currently, the, uh, the paradigm of energy uh, was the result of our understanding of electromagnetic fields, um, you know, from Faraday to Maxwell uh, and, and so on. And we've applied that to, uh, to production of energy, to all of the devices we have today. And now there's a new paradigm emerging. And this is a deeper comprehension of the structure of space-time itself. That is, deeper understanding of gravity. Right? Einstein told us that space-time is the result of space and time curving in the facility of, vicinity of mass. And now we're discovering that space-time is actually very granular at the quantum scale. And when we calculate the amount of energy in the granular structure of space, uh, you know, at the quantum scale, it's enormous. And there is much effort now that are developing all around the world to actually access that energy because it will give us infinite amount of energy, I mean, almost infinite amount of energy, uh, anywhere we are. Yeah. Most likely gravity control, you know, the capacity of controlling gravitational field which will allow us space travel and the true possibility of colonizing other planets and so on. So, I mean, it's going to change our world fundamentally. And the only error that was done in physics or, you know, the path we took uh, was to remove the ether or the energy in the structure of space-time that was already there before with Maxwell's equations. That's it, and so we see that this pattern seems to be on a scalar level from the micro to the macrocosm. And similarly, we see in the classical models of physics, we had the ultraviolet catastrophe. It just didn't work out. We're finding new ways. So your thoughts on considering new possibilities have allowed us to see that there are many possibilities on the frontier. When it comes to the engineering... Well, you know, yeah, so basically, you mentioned the, ultravi the ultraviolet ca catastrophe. Basically, what's emerging now is a fusion of that of those equations, which are quantum equations for electromagnetic radiation, with black hole theory, which is a perfect black body, right? So, um, this is, you know, where they come together, and how, you know, what comes out of it is a, a direct path to engineering the structure of space-time. And that's incredible. And so you've got this new technology that has been called the ARC. Now tell us a little bit about this and how people can find out how to get hold of this incredible technology that you're now offering the world. Well, you know, I figured out that, you know, of course, crystals are really, really good oscillators. That's why we use them in all of our devices. Um, now, I figured out a way to use a uh, crystal of very, very high purity um, and to put it in resonance with this fundamental field of energy at the base of quantum theory. And it's a very small coherency I'm able to produce, so it's a start. But it produces, you know, it, it emits uh, photons, not in the visible range, but, and it modifies the water structure. So we've done thousands of tests. We can show that if you approach one of those little crystals uh, that we charge, right, that, that we modulate is the correct terminology, to like a water uh, bottle or you know any water con container, the water in the in the container changes change its structure, and the result is that um, the result is that it has higher energy levels, higher level of structure, and it becomes more bioavailable for biology for the body. Uh, we've done tests on plants, thousands and thousands of tests. We've never had a null result. 
you know, we can grow plants three to four times faster than normal. They produce much larger fruits, they have much more nutrients in them and all this. So this is the first application, it's a very small application just for the personal health. But, um, but there's applications that are coming behind for energy production. These are little energy devices, but um, energy production in, the, in quantities, energy levels, you know, can be increased to eventually run your house, run, run your car, you know, hopefully run your spaceship. You know, um, this is all in the works, and uh, although it might sound, you know, really futuristic, that it's like it would be hundreds or if not thousands of years from now, it's actually right around the corner. It's gonna change our world very fundamentally. Uh, it's gonna change everything we do, from like the way you think about um, fresh water sources, for instance, if you have, if you're extracting energy from the vacuum, just for people to understand, the numbers are enormous. In a centimeter cube of space, in the structure of space-time, there's about 10 to the 93 grams per centimeter cube, it's huge. And so if we extract a very, very small portion of that energy, we could uh, desalinate ocean water, we can... All of a sudden, you know, energy is no longer an issue. And when you have that much energy, you can curve space-time, that means you have gravity control. That means transportation is no longer an issue either. So, you know, it's really going to change the world. This will ultimately revolutionize everything we know to be in our society, technologically, in the medical field, and in transportation, you name it. Like you said, hopefully we get to fly out there on our spaceships, but how can people find out what you're doing with the Resonance Foundation and the new art that you're offering? Well, they actually, you know, can go to, um, to uh, Resonance Science Foundation, um, and um, the Resident Science Foundation website has connection to our other websites as well. And you know, so there's a nonprofit foundation, and then there's Tourist Tech. Tourist Tech is a for profit laboratory that is doing some of the hardware research. The foundation does all of the uh, theoretical research and education for the world. So, you know. Um, the Resident Science Foundation uh, and uh, so residentscience.org and uh, they can find out, they can take a course as well if people are interested. We have what we call a delegate course where they can learn all about the science, all about the, the understanding of this new science and what it means for us individually and for the world and they get all the information they need to like research it themselves as well and they connect with the you know there's like 80 countries taking the course thousands of people so you connect with the community of people that are thinking about these things and like-minded people and uh, every every month for two hours I answer questions for all the people taking the course as well so that's fun excellent well now Sam it's been an honor to be able to have you here your Thank work you. is just going to revolutionize everything we understand about how we interact on a day-to-day -day basis. Here in the Vortex, we like to consider that we learn something new, we're making new discoveries every day. Right. You're on the forefront, the cutting edge of what we're discovering scientifically and beyond. I like to say that we won't know if we don't go, and you've done just that. So we'll see you in the Vortex.